Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here at theCUBE. We're in our Palo Alto studios taking a very short break in the middle of the crazy fall uh, conference season. We'll be back on the road again next week, but we're excited to take an opportunity to take a breath. Again, meet new companies, have CUBE conversations here in the studio, and we're really excited to have our next guest. He's a Purva Dave, the CMO of Cystic. Purva, great to see you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me yeah, here. Yeah, welcome. Happy Friday. Appreciate it. Happy Friday. <laughs> yeah. Always worth it. So give us kind of the 101 on Cystic. Yeah, Cystig is a really cool story. It was founded by a gentleman named Loris Dejiani. And I think the geeks in your audience will probably know Loris in a heartbeat because he was one of the co-creators of a really famous open source project called Wireshark. It's got 20 million users worldwide uh, for network forensics, network visibility, troubleshooting, all that great stuff. And uh, way back when, in 2012, Loris realized what cloud and containers were doing to the market and how people build applications. And he stepped back and said, we're going to need a totally new way to monitor and secure these applications. So we left all that Wireshark success behind and he started another open source project, which eventually became Sysdig. Okay. Fast forward to today, millions of people are using the open source Sysdig and the sister project Sysdig Falco to monitor and secure these containerized applications. So what does Sysdig, the company, delineate itself from Sysdig, the open source project? Well, and that's, you know, that's part of the challenge with open source. It's right, like right. part of your identity, right? right? Open right. source is who you are. And what we've done is, uh, we've taken Loris's vision and made it a reality, which is using this open source technology and instrumentation, we can then build these enterprise class products on top for security, monitoring, and forensics at scales that the biggest banks in the world can use, governments can use, pharma, um, healthcare, insurance, all these large companies that need enterprise class products, all based on that same original open source technology that Loris conceived of so many years ago. So would you say, so the one that we see all the time and kind of use as a base for the open source model, you've got kind of um, Hortonworks, it's really pure open source Hadoop, then yeah. you had kind of MapR that you know, it's kind of proprietary on top of Hadoop. And then you have Cloudera that's kind of open core with a wrapper. I mean, how, how does the open piece fit within the other pieces that you guys provide? That's really a really insightful question because Loris has always had a different model to open source, which is you create these powerful open source projects that on their own will solve a particular problem or use case. For example, the initial Sysdig open source project is really good at forensics and troubleshooting. Sysdig Falco is really good at runtime container security. Those are useful in and of themselves, but then for enterprise class companies, you operate that at massive scale and simplicity. So we add powerful user interfaces, uh, enterprise class management, auditing, security, we bundle that all on top, and that becomes this cloud native intelligence platform that we sell to enterprise okay. customers. And then how do they buy that? What's they can, the, the, a subscription the model, okay. you can use it either as software as a service, where we operate it for you, or you can use it as on-premise software, where we deliver the bits to you and you deploy it behind your firewall. Both of those products are exactly the same functionally, and that's kind of the benefit we had as a younger company coming to market. We knew when we started, we need to deliver our software in both forms. Okay, and then how does that map to you know Docker, probably the most broadly known kind of container, uh, application which you know rose and and really disturbed everything a couple years ago and then now that's been disturbed by you know the next great thing which is kubernetes so how yeah. do you guys fit in within those two you know really well known yeah. uh, pieces of the puzzle well you know like we were talking about earlier there's so much magic and stardust around kubernetes and docker and you just say it uh, to an IT person anywhere and either they're working on kubernetes they're thinking about working on kubernetes or they're wondering when they can get to working on Kubernetes. The, the challenge becomes that once the stardust wears off and you realize, yeah, this thing is valuable, but there's a lot of work to actually implementing it and operationalizing it, that's when your customers realize that their entire life is going to be upended when they implement these new technologies and implement this new platform. So that's where Sysdig and other products come in. We want to help those customers actually operationalize that software. For us, that's solving the huge gaps around monitoring, security, network visibility, forensics and so on uh, and part of my goal in marketing is to help the customers realize that they're going to need all of these capabilities as they start moving to Kubernetes. Right. Certainly it's the hot top. I mean we were just at VMworld. We've been covering VMworld forever yep. and both Pat and Sanjay had Kubernetes as really key 
uh, parts of their keynotes on on day one and day two. Right. So you know they're all in as well. Of course, we hear about it all the time from Amazon, and it goes without saying with uh, with Google. Yeah. You know, so what's <laughs> funny is uh, we released initial support for Kubernetes. Get this back in 2015, and this was a point where basically the world hadn't yet really they didn't really know what Kubernetes was. Uh, unless and they watch the cube, because we had Craig uh, McClucky okay. on at right. Google Cloud Platform uh, Next 2014. I'm awesome. just looking it up. Who Very told well us done. even the story <laughs> of, of the of the ship wheel and everything. <laughs> but you're great. right. But I don't think that many people were there. I mean, right. it's a Mission Bay Conference Center, which is not where you would think a, a Google conference would be. It only holds what, it's a 400 person conference facility. Exactly. And I think this year, uh, KubeCon is probably going to be 7,000 people. Uh, shows you a little bit of the growth of this industry. Uh, but even back in 2015, we kind of recognized that it wasn't just about containers, but it was about the microservices that you build on top of containers and how you control those containers. That's really going to change the way enterprises build software. Uh, and that's been a guiding principle for us as we've as we've built out the company and the products. Way to get out ahead of the curve, I love it. So no, I just want to see more of a philosophical question on an open source company. Um, because it, it, it's such an important piece of, of the modern software world, and you guys are foundationally built on that. But I always think about when you're managing your own resources. Mm -hmm. you know, how much time do you enable the engineers to spend on the open source piece of the open source project, and how much, which is great, and they get a lot of kudos in the in the ecosystem, and you know they're great contributors, and they get to speak at, at conferences, and it's it's good, it's important. Versus how much time they, they need to spend yeah. on the company stuff and and managing kind of those two resource allocations, because they're very different, they're both very important, and in a company like Sysdig, they're so intimately tied together. Yeah, and that last point to me is the biggest driver. Uh, I think some companies deal with open source as a uh, side project that gives engineers an outlet to do some fun and interesting things they wouldn't otherwise do. For a company like Sysdig, open source is core to what we do. Uh, we think of these two communities that we serve, uh, the open source community and the enterprise community, but it's all based on the same technology and our job in in this mix is to facilitate the activity going on in both of these communities in a way that's appropriate for how those communities want to operate I think most people understand how an enterprise uh, you know a commercial enterprise community wants to operate they want this to have a roadmap and deliver on that roadmap and that's all well and good that open source element is really kind of new and challenging our model has always been that the core open source technology fuels our enterprise business. And what we need to do is put as much energy as we can into the open source such that the community is inspired to interact with us, experiment, and give back. And if we do it right, two things happen. We see massive contribution from the community, and the community even might even take over our open source projects. We see that happening with Cystic Falco right now. For us, our job then is to sit back, understand how that community is innovating, and how we can add value on top of it. So coming back all the way to your question around engineers and what they should be doing, step one, always contribute to the open source. Make our open source better so that the community is inspired to interact with us, and then from there, we'll leverage all of that goodness in a way that's right for our enterprise community. So really getting almost like a flywheel effect, just investing in that core flywheel and it's going to spin off all kinds of great stuff. You got it. it, all, it you know, I, my model has always been, look, if, if the open source is this thing off to the side that you're wondering, oh, should our engineers be working on it or shouldn't they? It's going to be a tough model to sustain long term. Like there has to be kind of an integrated value to your overall organization, and you have to recognize that and then resource it appropriately. Right, right. So let's kind of come up to the to the uh, to the present. So you guys just had a big round uh, of funding. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So you got you got some new new cash in the bank. Um, so what's what's next for Synstick? Now you got you know this this new uh, new powder, yeah, uh, yeah. if you will. So what's kind of on the horizon? Where are you guys going next? Where are you you know kind of taking the company forward? Great question. Yeah, so we just raised a uh, $68.5 million Series D round uh, led by Insight Ventures and uh, uh, follow-on investments from our previous investors, Excel and Bain. Um, you know, 68.5 doesn't happen overnight. Uh, it's certainly been a uh, you know a set of 
of wins since Loris first introduced those open source projects to releasing our monitoring product, adding our security product. In fact, earlier this year, we brought on a very experienced CEO, Suresh Vasudevan, who was the previous CEO of Nimble Storage uh, as a partner to Loris so that they could grow the business together. Come this summer, we're having massive success. It feels like we hit a hockey stick late last year where we signed up some of the largest investment banks in the world, uh, large government uh, organizations, Fortune 500s, all the magic is happening that you hope for. And all of a sudden, we found these investors knocking at our door. We weren't actually even out looking for funds, and we ended up with an oversubscribed round. Right. So our next goal, like what are you going to do with all that money is, so first of all, we're moving to a phase where it's not just about the product, but it's about the overall experience with Sysdig, the company. And we're really building that out so that every enterprise has an incredible experience with our product and the company itself, so that they're just you know, amazed with what Sysdig did to help make cloud native a reality. That's great. And you got to bring an extra investor because looking at Crunchbase, you guys haven't had that many investors in the company. It's, Relatively a small number of, of participants. It's been very tightly held yeah. and uh, we like it that way. We want to keep our community small and tight. Well, Aperva, uh, exciting times and uh, I'm sure you're excited to have some of that money to spend on, on marketing going forward. Well, you know, we'll do our part. <laughs> All right. And thanks for, well, thanks for sharing your story and, uh, and have a great weekend. I'm happy it's Friday, I'm sure you are too. Thanks so much, have a great weekend. Thanks right. for having me. He's Aperva, I'm Jeff, you're watching theCUBE. It's a CUBE conversation in Palo Alto. We'll be back on the road next week, so keep on watching. See you next time.